Welcome to Wana Hill Church, where we connect and serve with our neighbors. It's Wana Hill Church Online. Today is December 26th, it's the day after Christmas. We've been spending all weekend celebrating with our families and our friends. Today's service that's being brought to you is strictly been recorded to give our techs the time off with their families. The, those joining us in person right now will be singing Christmas carols in the parlor with a traditional hymn sing. But we're glad that you've joined us. Pastor Andy will be coming in a few moments to share God's word about the light of Christ coming into our world, but also into our lives, to the very corners of our lives. Welcome to Wana Hill. We're so glad that you're here. On our website at whumc.com, there are many opportunities for you to join the life of the church. We'd love for you to connect with us. Be sure to check in and let us know that you're here today online. Here at Walnut Hill Church, we are a neighborhood community that wants to connect with our neighbors and love all people in relation with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're going to do and we'll continue to do. As we celebrate Christmas in this time of Christmas tide, Jesus is celebrated. And so welcome to worship. Guys, did you have a fabulous holiday yesterday? I hope you really enjoyed celebrating. 
I know today is probably the, the chaos of some people take down their decorations the day after, some people wait for a couple of weeks, but I want you to know that there's always a time that Christmas is not just one day, it is all year long. We are Christmas people. And so I wanted to share with you a little sweet book that says a very Merry Christmas prayer. Here's my Merry Christmas prayer I'll send to God above for all the gifts He's given from a heart filled with love. Thank you, God, for strings of light, so twinkling and bright, just like the star that led wise men on that special, special night. Thank you, God, for home sweet home. I love my cozy bed, just like the manger that you gave to cradle our Lord's head. Thank you, God, for songs of joy, your praises everywhere, just like the hosts of angel voices floating through the air. Thank you, God, for family time. You bless us one and all, just like the love that Mary felt inside the humble stall. Thank you, God, for trees of green dressed up from tip to top. Just like your glory filled the earth, your goodness does not stop. Thank you, God, for gifts we give to show the world your love, just like the lasting gifts you give, sweet blessings from above. Thank you, God, for candles lit on frosty Christmas eves. Just like your love shines in our hearts, your presence never leaves. Thank you, God, for yummy treats handmade with love and care, just like the good things that you give to bring joy everywhere. And thank you, God, for sparkly snowflakes coating earth in white. Just like forgiveness makes us pure, we're brand new in your sight. Thank you, God, for wreaths of holly hung under each door, upon each door, just like your love that welcomes us to live forevermore. And thank you, God, for listening to my Merry Christmas prayer, for sending Jesus, Lord and King, a gift that's always there. I love this because it, it does, it makes you kind of recap the wonders of this whole December season and make you thankful for what's coming in the fall, in the spring. We all love Christmas. It's all about the gifts and the packages, but it's also about family time and feelings of love and feelings that, of how we share that love and joy and peace with everybody. And so I hope you had a fabulous holiday. Remember to keep coming. We want to see you here at Lovers Lane and Walnut Lane. We love our families. And we hope you have a very happy year, New Year. Good morning, church, and welcome to online worship. Uh, my name is Andy Nelms, and I have the privilege of being the teaching pastor here at Walnut Hill Church. Today is, is kind of a special opportunity to worship. Right now, our in-person community is having a, a special kind of lessons and carols in the parlor on campus, and uh, we wanted to give our tech team a, a break for Christmas, and so we have this special pre-recorded message for you. Again, I just want to welcome you to worship, whether it's your first time or, or maybe you're a long-time member. We are so excited for the opportunity to worship with you this morning. Uh, I, I wanted to share just a special um, message this morning um, from the Gospel of John, and uh, I'm going to be reading um, from the first chapter, beginning in the first verse, and um, if you have a Bible with you, I encourage you to use it this morning, whether a physical copy or maybe on your phone, however you engage with the Bible this morning, I encourage you to join us and, and read along. Again, as we begin in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. You know, I was thinking about um, darkness. You know how, like, in your house, you have this map in your brain so that if the lights are completely out, you can navigate fairly well, right? You, you have this map in your brain and, and you can kind of move around your house even whenever it's dark. You also um, have cones and rods in the back of your eye and, and, and the rods are the things that help you see in low light. 
Um, the rods don't see color. They, they just see in these kind of versions of gray so that whenever there's low light, we can kind of see what's around us, but it's not very clear. So you can move around in your house without the light. Something else I, I've noticed is that I can hide the clutter in my house very well in the dark. Right? If, if there's something that I don't want to see, I can push it to the corner and, and turn out the lights, and, and I can ignore it pretty well. Well, what the Gospel writer John says is that before Christ came into this world, it was kind of like people were moving around in the dark. They could do it kind of well. Right? They, they, could, they could, you know, have this mental map and they could see things in varying colors of gray. They could get around okay. But when Jesus came into this world, it was like the light came on. Now, when that light came on, there were a few things that happened. Right? If you're walking around in the dark and, and all of a sudden the light comes on, that, that kind of stings a bit, right? You're, your eyes squint, and, and, and you may, you know, want to close your eyes so that you can adjust. It, it takes some time. And then also you can see. For those who were really stumbling in the dark, for those who, who wanted the light, the, the light was very welcome. They were so excited to be able to see. But those who had made a living living in the dark, they didn't want the light. There were some things that they had hidden successfully without the light. And so what John says is that those people who were welcoming the light, they, they rejoiced when the light came, but those people who were hiding successfully didn't want the light. My question for us is, how do we respond to light? I imagine that you're like me. There are some things that we are successfully hiding in the dark. We may rejoice whenever the light shines on the, the clean places in our life, the, the things that are working really well in our life. We, we rejoice when the light goes there, but when it goes to that corner of the stuff that we've hidden, the, the things that we've sequestered uh, to, the, to the darkness, when the light shines there, we get pretty upset. How do we respond to the light? My hope is that this morning as we live into this Christmas season, that we would rejoice in the light. That we would shine the light throughout our lives, especially in those places over the things that we've successfully hidden. And that we would show it all to Christ and let him redeem even those dark places in our lives. And the light is not just for us. John says that the light was the light of all people. Later, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, um, when Jesus uh, delivers the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A, a city built upon a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a basket, but places it on a stand for the world to see. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Once we have filled our life with light, that light can't help but to shine into others' lives. And when that happens, when our, when our light shines into others' lives, it, it acts as this kind of good works for all people, not so that we would receive glory, but so that our Father in heaven would receive glory. My hope, my prayer is that we would rejoice in the light. That we would shine it even in those dark places that we've successfully hidden. And that we would not let that light stay with us, but that we would shine it for the world to see. So that others may give glory to our Father in heaven. Merry Christmas, church. God bless. Thank you, Pastor Andy, for that encouraging word. And also, thank you for joining us online today for this very special service after Christmas. I want to remind you that you can continue to give your um, gifts. We're thankful for the generosity of, of, of the church, those who have faithfully supported the general operation budget of this year. We are so close for clo closing this year in the black. And we're thankful for with everything that we've been through in the pandemic, 
with the, the flood and freeze damage in February, of reopening our, our, our building. This has been a wonderful, challenging, but awesome year of 2021. As we come to the end, we have an opportunity to, to celebrate the ministries and to continue to support this, the ministries of Walnut Hill Church. So I encourage you to give if you can, and we thank you for that generosity. I also encourage you to join us either online or in person next Sunday as we start our new sermon series. You know, our, our, our um, mission is to love all people into relationship with Jesus Christ, but it starts with one. It starts with one. And so as we begin the new year, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about what it means to love one person as we, as we allow God to love all people. So thank you again for joining us in worship, and we hope to see you soon.